in my soccer universe. Let's try this without the dedicated microphone. Maybe there will be some better sound quality. Uh, wearing the PSG for the reason that I think that they were a major player in this summer's transfer market. Uh, and I want to briefly talk about summer transfers. You know, I do follow who is going where, but I'm not like this crazy uh, deadline day uh, follower. I also find it kind of odd that we have two deadline days, the one for the Premier League, who actually, I have to say, does it right, and then the one for the rest. I understand that the rest is not following up because, I mean, you can gain an advantage. You definitely gain an advantage if you... Um, have a longer transfer window and if the Premier League says well at the beginning of the season uh, you should have a full squad, yeah so be it. I, I do like that. I actually think that there shouldn't be a transfer period during the season at all or keep it open. I don't like it that you know uh, you have three or four rounds played and then you change your squad. Uh, that to me doesn't make much sense. I would actually I think you could probably make a transfer window towards the end of each season uh, and then you have your full squad available. You can make maybe some emergency signings, that has to be specified of course. But other than that, I really don't like and I think it's also not good for coaches that you don't know who you have. I mean, if you, uh, if you have an injury, maybe you have to sign up a new player, you, you, you need to sign a replacement. But wouldn't it be better than that if you have a good youth system in place, that you do that, go for the youth. What a concept. Don't, don't get your expensive uh, defender that you overpay for. Looking at you, Manchester United. Oh, you needed it and you, you have a good defender, but you overpaid for him. Uh, and take some from the youth develop the players. I think if people would go more on the development path, it really would do wonders for soccer. Uh, I mean, uh, soccer market is the most unreasonable one out there, we know that in, 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 it is all short-term, short-term, short-term thinking and the few clubs that have a long-term plan are usually the ones that are successful. Let's see. So, uh, for me there are two themes in this transfer window. The first one is um, defenders selling for a boatload of money and the second one the uh, immovable targets. I think it's more the transfer summer that could have been than a uh, transfer summer that was. Uh, and I think the only big name that really moved was Azar from Chelsea to Real Madrid and we knew that while, uh, you know, for quite a while it was pretty clear that Azar is gonna move to Real Madrid, uh, play for his idol. And so on. So I mean, that didn't come really as a, so, as a surprise. Uh, yes, there were lots of other moves. I mean, Harry Maguire to Manchester United and uh, De Ligt going to uh, Juventus. Those were maybe some surprises. Griezmann going to Barcelona. That I think was a big signing. And, and I think the one that I like best of all the uh, big money signings is Joao Felice to. Uh, Atletico Madrid. I think this is a super smart signing, I have to say, that I like a lot and probably are there. Yes, you paid a whole lot of, a whole lot of money, but I think that money will eventually pay off. Uh, I know that uh, Griezmann is a quality player that I do like as well and I think uh, he probably can contribute more to uh, Barcelona than let's say a certain Brazilian that's still lying on the ground, would. Although he might not have the flashes of said Brazilian, but you know, uh, I do think this was probably a sensible signing that will hopefully pay off for Barcelona uh, sooner than later. But yeah, uh, any other big names? I mean, really big names that were moving. I think those, those, those were the ones. I mean, yes, the Ajax stars, uh, Frank and Young also went to Barcelona. So, I mean, Barcelona was a major player. Real Madrid uh, signed a lot of players, but also um, 
gave up a lot of players and I also thought it was interesting um, that up until the um, end of the PvP period that it was more that PSG who, and also um, Manchester City they haven't made any huge signings that they were known for I think it's also a little bit of change in attitude uh, City definitely says we have our squad and PSG says we have all the stars we need um, I think another big name was Coutinho on a loan deal to Bayern but to me it was really about Everyone was talking, Bale should move, Neymar wants to move, um, Coutinho needs to move, you know, there were all those big names, uh, Juventus, Igoe needs out, we need Dybala out, um, Inter wanted Icardi out, and out of all those, two only happened. Uh, and the Coutinho one was a little bit of a mystery to me because I thought Barca needs it as a bargaining chip for Neymar, which didn't happen. They didn't happen, they gave that away and the other and the Icardi one uh, happened on the last day and kind of odd to me that um, yeah PSG took on Icardi. I think they will get a lot of goals. Uh, they also need it as a replacement and Mbappé is uh, injured. I think Cavani is also in, injured, so I think it's good to uh, they have the backup goals. I think they will get a lot of goals out of him. Um, so yeah, that was that, and then they made the goalkeeper's uh, change and get Kayla Navas, who is probably one of the most underappreciated goalkeepers uh, in the world, I have to say. Yes, he played for Real Madrid, he won three leagues for them, uh, three Champions Leagues for them, and uh, as a thank you, yeah, we want to get rid of you. Um, I think everyone knows that Kayla Navas is an absolute outstanding goalkeeper and I'm happy that he found a spot of, uh, at PSG. Areola is the um, kind of the first goalkeeper for France, so he will not see it on the bench behind Courtois, which also is not. It doesn't make much sense from his perspective, but I guess, you know, you're moving to, France, uh, to a big club, maybe that's the allure there to be seen as I said we are, we are very often um, so yeah but I think the transfer story I mean it was annoying as it can be was the Neymar saga where it was actually pretty pretty clear that Barcelona really cannot and Barcelona I think it was only in there to keep Messi happy uh, I really think, think so that they made some offers that they kind of knew the PSG will uh, disapprove. Seemingly the uh, relation between PSG and Barca anyway very uh, bad. So I think PSG will do uh, almost everything to avoid this transfer to Barcelona back. Then they pulled in Real Madrid to kind of uh, maybe get Barca to really overstretch themselves, which they uh, didn't. Barcelona, uh, Real Madrid, of course, wants to take a player away from uh, from Barca, but Neymar kind of only wants to go to Barca. And then Juventus is in the picture. I mean, that would have been if that would have happened. That would have been great. I mean, you have Ronaldo, you have Neymar, that would be a front line. However, uh, Juventus needs to get rid of so many players that they are literally overpaying. I think uh, that is the one thing that I don't get with Juventus at the moment. Juventus was always this team having great talent but never overpaying. And ever since Agnelli took over, uh, I know you need to pay Ronaldo, but uh, this ego in money, uh, probably ego in is paying off now, but you have also Dybala that you don't really want to have any, any anymore. You have some old players like Kedira, Mandzukic and so on. Uh, all veterans, all have uh, done good for the club, but overall I thought it was it's very, very curious. So it's unmovable players. Same thing Real Madrid. I mean, I think they will not get rid of Bale, which they just can't because of his wages. And Bale will say, hell, I'm gonna get out of here. I mean, I'm, I'm making the payday of my life. Uh, I've earned a lot for Real Madrid. If no one wants to sign me, I'm not going. Uh, try to figure that one out. Um, of course, I need to question. I mean, he's a player. He should he should want to play. But on the other side, I guess he wants to pick up golf, and that's that. And in the end, uh, they cannot move him. And suddenly, uh, Bale is a vital piece to the puzzle for Real Madrid. Now he got sent off, but. Uh, it's those weird stories. I think uh, Kroos is another one 
uh, Modric that maybe you wanted to move, but you really can because you're paying them so much. Uh, Coutinho, virtually unmovable because you're paying him so much, you overpaid for him. And that's the one thing, I mean, unless it's Ronaldo or Messi, don't pay the players so much. Uh, if you cannot off, you, you literally cannot offload them later and anymore because there are only a couple of teams that can pay those wages. And to be honest, uh, most of those teams have settled squads and I'm looking especially at England. Um, Liverpool and Manchester City have very much settled squads. Squad. So you really cannot do much uh, there. And I hope that clubs will learn from that. Clubs never learn, and especially the two Spanish giants are notorious for not being reasonable. So, yeah. But yeah, this was for me the theme that uh, I mean, the, the, the funniest one was bail to China, which probably wouldn't have paid the wages, but do you really want to go to China? I know the Chinese Super League is trying to do something, but I'm, I don't think that in the end. You know, we always hear from uh, leagues from outside of Europe that want to succeed. In the end, the uh, European hegem he hegemony is uh, gonna prevail. I cannot see, I really can, cannot see uh, the likes of Barcelona, Real Madrid giving up. Uh, maybe that's also why they might want to push for the Super League to get more money, to make more money, and in the end, um, also to stave off the Chinese investments. But hey, yeah, a great transfer summer it was. <laughs> Almost nothing happened. I mean, I have to say, the Licht, uh, although he had now a bad game, I think that um, they paid so that you went to Spain that much for him. I think that, you know, for a 19 year old, I understand if you want, especially with that talent, that you want to pay that much. Um, and especially have him learn from two of the uh, one of the best defending tandems that there ever was in Bonucci and Chiellini, although Bonucci is definitely going down the drain a little bit. Ever since he moved to Milan. Milan, the killer of careers, meanwhile. Uh, the Maguire one that they made him the best, the most expensive defender. I mean, I really like Harry Maguire, but he's not a Licht, so that was to me overpaying. But yeah, I'm glad that it's over, that we have now. That we have settled sports, um, and I hope the clubs learn. They will never learn, but I hope they will. Uh, I actually like that Liverpool said we are not going to make any big signings this year. We have our star players. I hope it will work for them. Um, so yeah. yeah, those are my thoughts on this year's transfer. Window. Ah, I wanted to add two field goal transfers, and for me, those are the transfers of the season. The first one is Balotelli to Brescia. I think uh, going to his hometown, I love that one. I really would hope that Balotelli gets maybe he has like a Roberto Baggio, a last shot at Fiore or something like that. Um, such a waste, wasted talent, honestly. Uh, I will always remember him for his two goals against Germany at Euro 2012. Uh, and you know, he did some good things for Milan. He was the by basically the last big signing at Milan. Big name signing that Milan did, so yeah. Uh, so to me, that is one but the biggest and to me most outstanding move uh, of the entire summer was Daniele De Rossi going to Boca. My favorite transfer in many years. Uh, Daniele De Rossi, that he was cut from the Roma squad is a travesty because while he might not have been contributing on the, off, on the pitch, off the pitch, he is a vital person. I mean, you see it, he's based practically an assistant coach. Uh, and I will never forget how um, in the decider, Italy against Sweden, uh, like uh, Ventura wanted to pull him on and said, what are you doing? Do something. I mean, this was on the one side rebellion, on the, on the other side it shows the big um, 
quality that De Rossi is and then that he is not going to one of the Arabian leagues or you know something where you can make a bottle of wine. No, he wants to experience. He was in Rome, which is an absolute crazy football town, maybe not the crazy stadium, but absolute nuts football town. And he takes it one step higher and goes to Buenos Aires and he goes to Boca to play at the Bombonera. That I mean, he's not making lots of money there, but he went there for the passion. This shows me he's passionate about the game. And to me, one of the best transfers uh, that a big name player is going to South America. I cannot help but love it. I think the only one was uh, when uh, Cedar went to Botafogo. Was it Botafogo? Or Vasco? One, 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 one of those two that I also totally adored. Uh, I want to see more of this, that non-South uh, Americans go to South America to end their careers, uh, especially if they still have stuff to give. And it would be amazing if De Rossi has, has a good impact at Boca. That would, I would absolutely love. So, those are my thoughts on the transfer window. Neymar staying. Neymar staying in Paris. That's going to be one to watch. Uh, I really think that Barcelona only tried to, you know, it was more or less, let's uh, try to not have him at, uh, at Madrid. Uh, we better have him in, at Paris. Um, we cannot afford him right, right now. So, let's see, maybe in the winter transfer window there might be something happening, but... Barcelona really does not need Neymar. They really do not need him. So I'm happy that he will stay now in Paris and he should face those fans that he's so much uh, um, angered, disrespected. So, so I really want to see that. And you know, he should do something in Paris. I mean, he, may, he wanted to go there. Now, don't back to uh, Barcelona with a tail between the legs. Show us that you're someone. Uh, yeah. Those are my thoughts. Again, for me it was a transfer window that was more about the transfers that didn't happen than the transfers that actually did happen. And the uh, not notable ones that did happen outside of Azar are the defenders Maguire and the Licht that went for a bottle of money. So that's my conclusion. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the transfer window. I'm sure that some of you are definitely more into uh, deadline day than I personally am. But yeah, those were my thoughts. Give a comment below what you think about the transfer window. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Serie A part two coming up uh, tonight. Part one went yesterday. I wanted to do it on Monday, but did not find the time to edit it. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.